I have always been a Trump fan. Voted twice for him, of course. Interviewed him for 90 minutes in the Trump Tower boardroom. Everyone in the media says they can't understand what Trump's even talking about. I can always understand, which I always know what Trump is talking about. Uh, of course, I had disagreements on some things over the years. Um, but I mean, that, of course, that's going to happen. But big, huge Trump fan in every way. Uh, but, or and, I should say, last year, I was ready to move on. Right, a, a huge fan, great job, thanks man. And I was ready to say, thanks for everything you did. You were exactly the wrecking ball we needed. Wish you could have done a little more on some things, but it's time to go to the bench. And let's get someone who is a lot like you in all the great ways and maybe uh, without some of the negatives. That's where I was. Then these indictments started coming. And that's when I realized that this is all that matters. Every four years, you always hear that this is the most important election in your lifetime. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that this is every election in your lifetime. This election right here, 2024, is every election now and in the future. Every election from this point forward, as long as you live, comes down to this election right now. What do I mean by that? Two things. First, uh, do you think that if Trump wins in 2024, do you believe that the Democrats will accept the outcome of the election? <laughs> will, they, will they humbly accept the election results? Of course not. How do we know that? They never have. They certainly won't if Trump wins again. What do you, what do you think the Democrats are going to be like, ah, oh, man, really thought we had him this time. <sighs> That's disappointing. <sighs> All right. Well, fair play. As we were, all right, Democrats, let's make the best of the next four years, can we? Not a chance. If Trump wins in 2024, the summer of rage that was 2016 will look like a picnic. Second thing, do you think that, uh, let's say they're successful with all this. Let's say Trump drops out or can't run for office or whatever. Do you think that the left won't play these same games against every other Republican from this point forward forevermore in every election forever? Or post every election? Like, like let's, say, let's say by some crazy circumstance, a, a Republican, a good Republican from the Democrats' perspective, wins the White House somehow, but then does something to go astray? You don't think they're gonna put him in the slammer after? Just like they're trying to do with Trump now. Look at how they treated John McCain when he ran. They loved John McCain until he got a little too close to beating Obama. They crushed him. Look how they treated Mitt Romney. Right? The, the, like these politics or not, these are two decent men. But they were destroyed by the left. They had to go back to grade school to find something on Mitt. Like he cut some gay kid's hair or something. <laughs> like, the, like the third grade. Right? Nothing will stop these people. But now the game is different. Now the game's not just, let's say, bad things about them. Let's talk about things they said or did when they were in, in, in middle school. Now let's throw them in jail. Now it's the things we're going to accuse them of aren't just bad politically. Now they're criminal. And they have that weapon now if the Republicans get too close to the sun. Find something to throw at them. It doesn't even matter if it'll hold up. Like none of these Trump stuff will, like the RICO charges, are you kidding me? As Alan Dershowitz said, RICO charges are notoriously easy to indict and easy to even convict, but also super easy on appeal. But they don't care. The whole game is just to gum it all up. And that's what they're doing. And they're gonna find that on every Republican from this point forward. If Trump loses this election, the Democrats will do this for every Republican who will ever run for office ever again. And they'll get you. They'll find you on something. You, you broke the law sometime today. You broke the law today. You tailgated too close. You changed lanes without putting your blinker on soon enough. You, uh, you did not disclose an uh, online out-of-state purchase on last year's tax returns, don't you know? So you committed tax fraud. Uh, you ripped the tag off your mattress. You did something illegal today. And now... They'll throw you in jail for it. 
And one last thing about Trump and then we'll move on. This is another bonus of what they're doing with Trump. They are trying to silence anyone who might speak in the future and making anyone who might want to work or work for the Trump administration in the future or even as like Trump's lawyer. They're trying to silence anyone or prevent anyone who would even potentially be associated with Trump or any other Republican candidate in the future from doing that. Let's, let's, say, let's say Trump wins, right? And Trump's like, hey, I want you to be my secretary of state. Who? I don't know if that's a great idea because I may be swept up in some Rico racketeering charges like I'm a henchman in the Gambino family. So no thank you, Mr. President. A little added bonus that the Democrats are trying to pull off here. So I say all that just so we all know that's where I'm at right now. I'm a huge Ron DeSantis fan. I would vote for Ron DeSantis in a second, gladly, happily. And I think he'd be a great president. And right now, there will never be a Ron DeSantis president if we let the left get away with what they're doing with Trump. Ron DeSantis is like 42 or something. He's like 44. He's got, these days, he's got 30 more years to, to run for president. That'll never happen if we let them get away with what they're doing with Trump. I'm happy to be proven wrong on this if you disagree. Now, all that being said, who knows what's going to happen in this next year or so? No, no. Trump's facing 717 years in prison. If there's anyone who can predict, who thinks they can predict what's going to happen in the next year or so, they're out of their minds. Trump is facing 717 years in prison. He's actually also facing the death penalty. They don't talk about that. The, the prosecution hasn't talked about this. But one of the January 6th charges is conspiracy against rights. And I remember when I first read that, I thought, geez, that's weird. What is that? What's a conspiracy against rights? Like, what is that? That is like weirdly vague. So it turns out that if someone dies in the commission of this crime, then they're eligible for the death penalty. And uh, Ashley Babbitt died on January 6th. They say a couple of police officers died on January 6th. Now, prosecutors, again, they haven't talked about this, but that is in the law that they cite. So who knows what's going to happen to Trump in the meantime? All I know is this. The system is dedicated to taking him out and putting him in jail and making it so he can never run for office ever again. That is the deep state's mission. And I know they won't stop until they're successful. Can Trump beat back their attacks forever? What if you had your own spy? Would you use them to keep tabs on the most important events happening around the world? Update you on exactly what you needed to know each morning so you could be smarter, more prepared, ahead of the curve. Meet CIA veteran Mike Baker. Every day he'll be your personal intelligence officer, delivering insights and analysis once reserved for the President of the United States. The President's Daily Brief with Mike Baker. Get briefed. Stay ahead. Your briefings begin on September 5th. 